Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education running for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience. And today we will be starting the second chapter in the 10th standard biology portion that is heredity and evolution. A very interesting chapter, very interesting chapter, if taught properly, if understood properly. And today we will be just looking into an introduction into this chapter of heredity and evolution. But before we actually go into what is there in this chapter, we first need to recall some things we've done before in the previous chapter, that is reproduction. During the, while studying reproduction, right, that is the process of multiplication, the process by which an organism multiplies itself to form offsprings, progeny, etc. During that process, we saw that there are two kinds of reproduction when we were studying this, right? We know that we saw a sexual reproduction and we saw sexual reproduction, right? We saw a sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Now, we know that asexual reproduction involves only one parent, right? We don't have two parents who are, you know, involved in the reproduction process. We have just one parent, which is giving rise to numerous other organisms by numerous methods. And asexual reproduction, always there are two parents involved, as we know that there are two parents involved. And there are two parents which are going to come together. They're going to, you know, there's going to be fusion of the gametes, that is of the sex cells or of the reproductive cells. And then there's going to be uh, zygote formation and blah, blah, blah. So we looked at all of that. But there's one more very important difference that we looked at while studying this. And I want to just highlight that right now. We saw that asexual reproduction involves one parent, but we also saw that due to this only one parent being involved, asexual reproduction led to less variation. And we looked at variation in a very brief way. We saw that variation was just a change. It was a difference between the DNA, between the character, characteristics of the parent and the offspring we saw and that was basically because of the errors in DNA copying as we saw when there is an error in DNA copying when DNA copying because we know DNA copying is an essential part of the reproductive process if there is an error in DNA copying, there might be some change in the feature of the progeny or of the offspring. And because of that, there is some change produced in the offspring, which we call variation. And since in asexual reproduction, there is only one parent organism involved, we say that there is less variation because there is not much of a scope of variation. There may be one or two or three errors, but not a high amount or a high level of variation, right? But on the same point, if we look at a, uh, if we look at sexual reproduction, then we see that because there are two parents involved, there are two parents involved in this case. So since there are two parents involved, we say there is more variation. Why? Because number one, already we have DNA copying errors. And number two, we have two parents involved who are giving their characteristics and their characteristics are going to be merged and this and that. And there's going to be something which is going to be more uh, dominant and something which is going to be less dominant. So we looked at all these things. There's going to be less variation in asexual reproduction and there's going to be more variation in sexual reproduction because of the presence of two parents along with errors in DNA copying. I hope that's clear. Now, when we look at this less and more variation, how is it linked to this chapter? Let us see. Over time, you see that over time, there is variation in every generation. Let's take an example. Suppose I have this person, right, of the first generation. We are considering here of the first generation. So suppose this is the person of the first generation. He has some A and B characteristics. 
a comma b it may they may look like some coordinates but they are not it's first generation has a comma b characteristics now this first generation organism will divide or whatever it will reproduce to form two more organisms which are going to be of the second generation because obviously now they're of the second generation after the first generation comes the second generation but there's going to be a difference this first generation had a comma b characteristics let's assume that a comma b are some characteristics so this may have a dash comma b characteristics you can see that here we have a here we have a dash so it is slightly a more a slightly different characteristic let's take an example suppose the first generation had black hair the second generation has blue hair but well, that's not very really possible but suppose the first generation has black hair the second generation has blue hair so that's a slight difference right that difference is being produced and you can see that that difference is going to lead to some change in the offspring right so there's a change in the offspring similarly the second second organism of the second generation suppose has a comma b dash so it has a chain characteristic in b so if the first generation had b the second generation had b dash that is slightly different from b although one important thing to be noted here is that the body design is same The body design does not change. This is something to note here. Although many, you know, internal features will change, you know, the body design actually is almost the same. After this, we move on to the next generation. So suppose the second generation will produce again three or uh, two offsprings of the third generation. So these are two organisms of the third generation. Now these may have characteristics such as a dash dash comma b dash. So again, there is some degree of change. You can see that there we had a from a to a dash, a dash to a dash dash to b dash. The b which was not changing in the second generation from a from the first generation has now changed in the third generation. And again, you will see here too, there may be some change. So there may be A dash and there may be B dash dash. So again, a new change completely to B dash dash. So you can see again, there might be some change. If we look at the last one again, now let's just go into the, the, uh, the second generation, the second organism of the second generation. This one may again have two offsprings of the third generation. And they may have characteristics such as A dash B dash dash. It may have characteristics such as A B dash dash. So you can see that again there is variation. Here you have A, here you have A, but the B has changed. Here you have A, you have A dash here. So it's changing. Again you have B dash, so B dash dash. So again there is variation coming. And if you compare the organisms of the third generation to the first generation, if you compare them to the first generation, you will see that there is same body design, but many characteristics have changed because of the problems, the errors of body design accompanied with some characteristics of sexual reproduction if it is taking place there. So this process by which variations are going from generation to generation, going on from first to next, next to next, this transfer of variations is called accumulation of variation. Accumulation of variation. Very important. The process by which this variation is changing, there is variation from generation to generation and there is some accumulation of variation, right, in this process. This first generation, and these generations have a name actually, they all have special names. The first generation is called F1 generation. 
The two second generation organisms are called F2 generation and the, these third generation organisms are called F3 generation. So just that F is there and you have the generation number, right? F1, F2, F3 generation, right? And these are going to be important in the coming slides, in the coming videos, right? So just remember this. So this is the process of accumulation of variations, right? Now, how are variations beneficial? Why are they important? Now, we have discussed that variations arise as a result of DNA copying uh, mistakes, errors, or, you know, some other sexual reproduction factors. But what is the use of these variations? Are they beneficial? Yes, they are beneficial. Let's see how. Now, suppose you have some bacteria. Okay, suppose this is a, you know, water pond and there are some certain organisms living in it. Suppose some certain bacteria live in it. Okay, let's assume that these are bacteria which live and they're of the same species. And suppose there are some five. Okay, I'm drawing some five and they are all bacteria. Now, you know that these days there is global warming, there is greenhouse effect, there is different uh, there are different activities which are affecting the environment and because of there is there is a phenomenon taking place called climate change so the climate is changing islands are immersing in water they are submerging there is problems water temperatures are going up and down so there is this you know climate change hot places are coming colder and because of all the disturbances in the environment now suppose because of this climate change the water temperature Suppose it is 20 degrees Celsius originally. Originally it is 20 and that's the temperature for which these organisms, these bacteria are adapted to. But suppose because of climate change, this 20 degrees Celsius changes to, well, 25 degrees Celsius. Now if this 20 degrees Celsius temperature of the water is changing to 25 degrees Celsius, then the water temperature is going up. Since the water temperature is going up, there may be certain, because this bacteria, suppose, cannot live in, a, you know, a different temperature level. So some of the bacteria may start dying out. So suppose these are the two, these are, this is the set of bacteria, the ones which I'm just, you know, shaded and colored and circled. This section of the bacteria, suppose, is not resistant. And ultimately, because of the change in the temperature of the water, it will die. This group will die, right? And because they are adapted to that, they have not adapted themselves to the change, right? But suppose because of variation, right, because of that error in DNA copying, there is this section of the bacteria which has got this resistance property. Right? Now, because of variation, these have become resistant. These bacteria have become resistant and hence they survive. So there's a small group of the bacteria of the same species that has got this variation and this variation has enabled them to survive. Thus, variation and thus this variation enables that species to survive as well. So, Variation in such cases helps in the sustenance of a species or of a group of organisms in case of change in weather conditions, habitat conditions, right? So thus, variation is essential for the sustenance or for survival of a species. However, it is not necessary for the survival of an organism, right? Of an organism, because if it is able to, okay, sustain an organism because of variation, that organism needs to reproduce as well. So ultimately, that organism will help in maintaining essential, uh, those variations will help in maintaining the species. So it is basically essential at the species level, but not that important at the individual level. Right, because individuals, it is not of any use. Variations are not of any use unless and until those variations are transferred. 
So if they're just at the individual level, not transferring, well, they're not, they're not of any use because they need to transfer to various sections of the species. So essential for the survival of a species, but not too important for the survival of an individual organism. Right? I hope that's absolutely clear to each and every one of you. And this was an introduction to heredity and evolution and variations. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, do like and subscribe. If you have any doubts, they are most welcome in the comment section below. Goodbye, stay healthy, stay smart, and do keep studying. Bye-bye.